This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and start our financial reporting journey together. And there's no better place to go through and start than with the conceptual framework. Now, this conceptual framework is vitally important to the whole world of financial reporting because it underpins everything to do with your accounting standards. So all of your IFRSs, all of your IASs have been developed using the fundamental rules and principles that are contained within the framework. So effectively, it's like your Rosetta Stone, that fantastic stone that's held in the, the British Museum down in London, whereby what is contained on that Rosetta Stone enabled historians to go through and understand and decipher Egyptian hieroglyphics. And therefore that then underpins everything else that we then know with regards to the writing and how that went through and was developed and how effective we are today in our own languages and how they have been developed. So this is what we have here. The, the the framework is the Rosetta Stone of your international accounting standards because everything contained within here is then used to develop other accounting standards. OK, so what you've got there, I think there's is it five bullet points, five excellent uh, that if you like, what are the basic idea behind the framework? So it makes sure, first of all that your IFRSs are developed within a conceptual framework. So what we're ensuring there is that the rules within the financial reporting standards are consistent. Now that they're all prepared upon the same basis. Because if not, then you're not going to get a full understanding of the position and the performance of a particular entity. And that will go through there and help us a comparison uh, one year to the next and also then from one entity to the other. If they're using IFRSs and they are using standards that are consistent from one entity to the other. Uh, also provide you guidance whereby no standard exists. So just have an awareness of that. It's not something that you're going to have to apply. But if there isn't a standard that exists for a particular accounting transaction, so maybe you're in a very complex business, there is no standard. So you go back to the fundamental principles. You go back and look at the definitions of your assets, liabilities, equity, income and expense. Look at the recognition criteria and look at the measurement criteria to show there how you present and disclose that transaction within your financial statements. Uh, it helps you improve existing standards. So effectively, the, uh, the most recent standards that have been updated uh, will be your financial instruments. Uh, you'll also see that your revenue has gone through big transformations recently and also as well your leases. Again, I'm not going to go through there and explain at this level uh, your financial reporting. It's more strategic business reporting as to what the improvements were. Here, you just need to know the rules and apply them within a financial reporting exam. Okay, But it's good to have an awareness at this point in time with regards to what the idea is behind the improvements on those standards and where they've arisen. Uh, it goes through there and makes sure that the information is useful. So particular focus there on, on, on your measurements and the recognition. Uh, we need to make sure that when we recognise that we're recognising something that is useful and that therefore it has been reliably measured. If not, then we shouldn't be including it if it is not useful to the users of the accounts. Because remember, the users of the accounts are looking to make decisions, aren't they? Uh, and then it rules out any creative accounting because if there is any area of uncertainty, you should be going back to the framework when you're using maybe judgment or estimates to ensure there that the accounting that you are applying is not, if you like, uh, unethical and, and, and I'm persuading you to be creative in what you're doing. If you've got this Rosetta Stone, this fundamental guidance, then we can go through there and ensure that there is no creative accounting. 
Some of you may have gone through and seen the framework previously in financial accounting. If you have, then just be aware, we are looking at the revised framework that was issued in March 2018. Now, don't start panicking and thinking, oh, hang on a minute, there's going to be massive changes. No, none of that. Uh, we have some subtle changes. Uh, there's some new areas that have been included. Uh, well, not included, but new areas that have been updated, so added to what was there already. Uh, there's been some specific updates to particular areas and then there's been clarity added on, on areas that maybe previously were in the framework that had been removed and have now been added back in. Okay, So again, it's just to have an awareness and we'll talk about them as we go through within the videos themselves. Uh, but we have more definition now with regards to measurement basis. So there are changes to what we previously had. The, the fundamentals are still there. Uh, it, with regards to your historic cost, uh, with regards to fair value, value and use, but there have been changes elsewhere. Uh, we have a little bit extra with regards to presentation and disclosure, given that the ISB, the International Accounting Standards Boards, are trying to improve the presentation and disclosure within the financial statement. So they have brought into the framework area to help the users and the preparers of the accounts. And also, we always used to have a section on recognition, but now there's also a section on de-recognition. There wasn't anything categorical there with regards to de-recognition, even though it is talked about within property, plant and equipment, whereby we dispose of an item of PPE and within financial instruments as well, whereby we repay a loan. Uh, updates have been made slightly to some definitions of assets and liabilities. Again, very, very subtle. Likewise, the recognition of your assets and liabilities has been slightly updated. But again, what you'll find is that you need to know the definitions for financial accounting when you've passed that. You still need to know them now, but now remember the focus we said within that introduction is more upon the application. And what you'll find is the application to these updates and these new areas doesn't actually change anything overall within the grand scheme of the IFRSs and IASs. Okay. Uh, and then we've just got a little bit more there uh, that's been added to clarify measurement uncertainty. Uh, prudence was taken out previously of the last framework. So that's now been added back in because it was still relevant within standards such as provisions and inventory. Stewardship, talking about the running of the business uh, and the directors running that business on behalf of the shareholders. That's been brought in a little bit in terms of the framework now at the start. And then in the previous version of the framework, substance over form was removed. Uh, from the qualitative characteristics uh, and now that has been brought back in uh, to ensure there that we are applying substance opposed or as opposed to the legal form okay so that's just a little bit of the background about what the framework is used for and what the changes have been in a nutshell in the following videos we'll go through there and look at each chapter of the framework in a little bit of detail